Hello everyone, thank you for this kind introduction. Uh, please, few words. Uh, is Shahanadar Svagat Keli Danyavad? So, today uh, uh, I would like to, to thank, of course, the organizing committee for giving me the opportunity to, to talk today and to come for the first time in India. Uh, uh, and uh, today we'll talk about uh, how to, uh, I will try to make a bridge between what we addressed yesterday about uh, uh, MRI biomarkers uh, to a more integrative exploration of the gut brain axis in Parkinson's disease. So a few words about my institute. Uh, which is a national research public institute, uh, which claims for three main keywords, agriculture, food, and environment. Of course, with such large keywords, uh, many overlapping teams uh, emerge. And I will focus on uh, food and global health, uh, which means that we want to understand the links between human health, food, and the environment to, uh, in order to improve both the susceptibility, uh, the sustainability of food production for food health benefits and for a better accessibility of healthy diets. So uh, concerning uh, the, the focus on, on uh, Parkinson's disease, we have to address the first question is how do environmental factors intersect with uh, such uh, disease? As, uh, as we have seen extensively yesterday, uh, 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 PD is of multifactorial origins with a combination of uh, genetic predisposition factors and environmental ones. And it has been clear now in the literature that there's an increased risk for exposition to, for example, pesticide, as such that in France, PD was recognized as an occupational disease in agricultural professionals for more than 10 years. But also, we know clearly that MPTP analogues or metals like manganese can also induce uh, uh, Parkinsonian syndromes. Secondly, uh, the second question is how do diet can intersect with PD? And again, there's large literature uh, which address these questions and uh, we can identify clear decreased risk for, for example, general healthy dietary patterns for the Mediterranean diet and even more for the hybrid, hybrid forms of diets which mix the dietary approach to stop hypertension, the DASH one, and the Mediterranean diet again. A uh, few words about food. Uh, it has been reported that, in, for, for example, intake of berries can be beneficial, but for women, not for men, it's strange. And I have also to notice that coffee and tobacco can also decrease the risk for PD, but I cannot dare to incorporate such foods on an healthy diet. Few words about my uh, lab, which is called Agrosonance, which is located in the center of France, near Clermont-Ferrand, which is famous primary for its uh, more than uh, 80 volcanoes uh, designated by uh, UNESCO as a World Heritage Site. And our lab is just behind this one. This is very beautiful uh, area. And uh, I, uh, I have managed uh, the national infrastructure devoted to MRI for more than 10 years. And we are able uh, to perform with MRI uh, microscopy, preclinical MRI on small animals, and even more low field uh, uh, magnets, uh, experiment with low field magnets. And I will focus, here is uh, 
schematic view of our lab. And you can see here, I will focus on the, the three ones. Uh, first of all, our microscope, which is able to, to reach a spatial resolution of about in between 10 to 15 ma micrometer. Here is our uh, horizontal magnet devoted to uh, preclinical imaging on small rodents and which uh, runs at 11.7 Tesla, which is the highest magnetic field you can uh, uh, reach with a, a commercially available equipment. And uh, a few words about this strange equipment, which is a low field magnet. And you can see here that with such uh, strange uh, uh, equipment, we can get we can get a very high resolutive profile in 1D dimension with a very low field. And we use this, exp this equipment for doing some functional MRI on trees. But it is with the progress of, of such equipments, this is a new hope for uh, having low cost MRI and it's maybe a solution for a better accessibility for MRI uh, as, uh, uh, if you remember, uh, this is a big problem as addressed by Professor Kumaran yesterday. So uh, here is my view for why is MRI so beneficial for extracting biomarkers of human brain disorders. Uh, mainly because this is multi-parametric. I sums up here. I sum up here uh, the most relevant parameters uh, for studying the, the CNS. Uh, you are able to to measure concentration of spins. You can get information on static and diffusive motions, and both are very sensitive to the environments. And for example, it is very useful for inferring structural information. Again, uh, also you can uh, observe uh, dynamics of chemical exchange, which is useful for getting metabolic uh, maps. And last but not least, you can also get information from other nucleus and uh, 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 proton, which is, of course, the main, the main nuclei, but uh, uh, with other animal sensitive nuclei like sodium or fluor, fluor, you can get also valuable information. So the situation is when you get an image, you have always uh, uh, a nonlinear mixtures of several parameters. And the, the, the acquisition challenge consists in acquiring several, several acquisitions with different weightings. And then by modeling and estimation, you can extract quantitative biomarkers. So now it's my opinion about the, the, the classifications challenge we, we, we face on. Uh, if you succeed uh, to, to get multiple uh, map of, of parameters for each group of subjects, and if you are able to, to segment nicely the, the rows as shown by uh, Raoul yesterday, uh, you, you, you fast uh, uh, spatial parameter matrix for each subject, and then you can, you, you, you can uh, experiment three strategies. First one is the simplest one, is single parameter and, and, and uh, removal of all spatial information, this is what we did. Second one is uh, 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 keeping multiple parameters but averaging over the spatial dimensions. This is what, uh, uh, what has been shown nicely yesterday. And uh, last, uh, uh, you, have, you can keep all the information, multiple parameters and spatial information, but it is st still a challenge. So, uh, we, uh, in the past years, we have focused on mainly on uh, iron in the brain concerning biomarkers of PD. And uh, as you know, maybe the concentration of iron uh, increased from 
30 to 100% in the substantial negro of PD patients. This iron storage uh, induces both uh, oxidative stress and aggregation of al alpha uh, synuclein, a very important vector of the disease. We don't know clearly yet if it's cause or a consequence of neuronal loss, but never mind. Uh, it is uh, important to, to have in mind that uh, MRI is closely connected to, the, to this iron because in its different form, because you know uh, uh, maybe that there's different form of irons, uh, divalent form, divalent or trivalent form, but both are paramagnetic, which means that uh, they are able to, to influence the, the, the level of magnetization. And we, we, we focused uh, mainly on the measurement of uh, T2 stars, which is an apparent relaxation time. Uh, I like to say that it is the, 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 the twin sister of susceptibility mapping. Uh, in fact, this is a close, this is the same contrast origin. And uh, by this relation, this simple relation, you can see that the R2 store is related linearly to the concentration uh, of iron, thanks to uh, a, a constant, which is a reactivity, which is magnetic field dependent. So because R2 store can be mapped within all the brain, you can, you can uh, uh, have information on the variation of iron concentration and also you, if you need uh, you can also quantify the concentration but you have please uh, see that it's there's an, also an important component which is a background uh, these background factors which is uh, 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 unknown most of time so let for I, I I have selected two 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 book, two 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 book publication uh, for group. The first one was uh, conducted by Miguel Miguelula, and uh, we we perform uh, uh, we acquired uh, two uh, um, uh, uh, air to store data uh, longitudinally and uh, during two sessions. Uh, separated by three years on the same PD patients. So by this way, we were able to keep uh, the, the, background, the background factors uh, uh, and the between session various and small. And uh, thanks to this strategy, we were able to detect a significant variation of air to star in the substantia nigra of PD patients. And this variation is also uh, correlated with the difference of disease rating scales. We went further with uh, uh, this study, which was conducted by a postdoctoral fellow, Leila Keder. Uh, uh, we, we started by increasing the quality of our data. Uh, uh, mostly, we, we uh, got uh, uh, more patients which uh, have been uh, uh, stratified in four different groups which uh, differ from the duration of the disease, as you can see here. And we developed uh, uh, a new method for boosting the air to store sensitivity because we observed, and it is imp very important to notice that the between subject variation of air to star is, was approx at three Tesla, approximately equal to 20% uh, in the substantia nigra. And this variation is non-specific. This is independent of the disease. And we also observe that in uh, the different part of the basal ganglia, in the different basal ganglia, ROIs, the bit this between subject variations were highly correlated. So, uh, thanks to these uh, observations, we simply performed an intrasubject uh, referencing 
by measuring the signal of a specific part of the basal ganglia, the red nuclei. And because of there, there is no variation of uh, air to star due to the disease in these regions, they can serve as a good reference. And if we subtract the value in the, of the red nuclei from the, those of in different regions, we demonstrate that uh, if you compare the variation of A2 star uh, in the different group uh, uh, in, the row, in the row form compared to the new form, you can observe a very uh, large increase of the power of such measurement. So, uh, here is the second part of my, of my talk. I would like to switch to the question of the diet. And uh, I will try to address uh, 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 a very simple question. Is could dietary supplements uh, enhance the quality of life for individuals with PD? For that, uh, I have to, 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 to draw the scene, and uh, uh, we know we have a lot of evidence that there are many signs of uh, gastrointestinal disorders associated with PD. Here are the main signs of such, uh, 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 such disorders. First of all, dysbiosis. Uh, which means uh, significant uh, modification uh, in the gut microbiota. A constipation, which is highly prevalent because uh, approximately 90% of the subject are uh, constipated. Uh, the gut inflammation, an increased permeability of colon, and again, uh, the presence of uh, alpha synuclein aggregate all along the gastrointestinal tract. So, even uh, if you have two subtypes of PD, as addressed by uh, Raoul and Esther yesterday, uh, 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 and even if uh, we don't know clearly if this, those GI signs are cause or consequences of PD. Uh, uh, we, we know that there is some evidence for bidirectional pathways. So this is an exciting therapeutic avenue for uh, recovering an, uh, uh, an LC microbiota and hence maybe uh, uh, um, an improvement of the quality of life of the patients. So, uh, uh, in the, in the, the, there's a, a very uh, an emerging uh, uh, huge literature about the efficacy of dietary supplements on the PD. Uh, this you can see here. There's, there, there are many many studies. And with a positive tendency for efficacy, and uh, the studies uh, um, deal deal with uh, probiotics, prebiotics, and a mix of of uh, both. But even uh, uh, with such a positive tendency, we need more consistency uh, in the study design, and mainly. We have to increase power with the uh, highest number of subjects, and we need more uh, information about the, the, the parameter of supplementation. This is why we, we have designed a, a, a new project with Professor Daniel Racocianu. Uh, this project is named Mental. And uh, I will start with our first, uh, our preclinical strategy, which is based on the RAT model. And RAT model, uh, as you know, may, of course, uh, allows uh, to, to decrease the intersubject viability in a cohort. It allows also uh, longitudinal following. 
And uh, we, we developed uh, an intracellular injection of adeno-associated viruses to express the alpha-synuclein in the rat midbrain. Uh, the characterization of, uh, of the uh, gut-brain axis uh, uh, is based on multiomic and multimodal data acquisitions, uh, which allows close extensive characterization of this axis. And uh, uh, the same approach will be uh, performed before and after administration of the supplement in the diet. And uh, we would like to integrate uh, all this data using explainable artificial intelligence for the identification of mechanisms. Thank you. So here is a view which uh, schematizes uh, this strategy because here is uh, our model of rats with no supplementation. We will perform multiomic uh, characterization based on multi-parametric MRI, histology, metagenomic sequencing, transit time uh, measurements, sorry, oops, uh, in the digestive system, and uh, motor, motor uh, behavior measurements, and uh, many other details. And as I said, uh, we, will, we will integrate all this data thanks to, thanks to, to, to the help of, uh, of Daniel. And uh, uh, with the results, the, the, the results will be integrated for developing the supplementation. And again, we will run the same, the same uh, analysis chain. So I apologize for having not yet uh, very uh, full data uh, of this strategy because this is an emerging project. But I have only preliminary, preliminary data. Uh, which uh, uh, deals with uh, 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 a flexible rat model based on the Fisher strains. Uh, why is this strain? Because we have an experiment. We have an experience. Sorry, uh, on this strain uh, uh, in its axonic form, for which is very important for being able to perform a transfer of, of microbiota. But up to now, there is no data about uh, 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 a PD model based on this strain. And uh, this is what we have done. And I, I will show you uh, rapidly the first result about both. Uh, here, the, the, the histology results, which uh, uh, showed uh, 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 a loss of dopaminergic neurons and also uh, a, a clear alpha synucleoneopathy. Interestingly, uh, we are able to show uh, by uh, putting some spores uh, in the food of, of the animals and by measuring the, the level of spores in the faces of these animals that there is a longer transit time in the digestive systems, which is in line with the constipation of these animals uh, with PD. And also, uh, we have observed uh, a long uh, uh, time after intracerebral injection of the adenovirus that motor symptoms uh, appear uh, uh, till uh, at till 45 day post injection, as you can see here, because you, we, we observe a clear asymmetry between the motor performance uh, uh, of the rat. So here are the early conclusions about this uh, uh, new model. Uh, we observe so the consistent symptoms of PD uh, at approximately 90 uh, days post injections. And we have a full multimodal characterization of the gut brain axis. But I apologize for having no, uh, already no uh, results about metagenomic sequencing and MRI inference. This is in course. And future work will be to integrate this data again with explainable IA, 
which is a very important step for being able to develop a personalized multi-target supplement uh, uh, with the hope to promote healthy microbiota. So we have also a, a clinical part in this project. Uh, I have to say a few words about uh, microbial imbalances, which have been clearly observed in many, many studies on humans. Uh, but these results are uh, uh, sometimes inconsistent and uh, with contradictory findings. Uh, uh, it is certainly due to many confounding variables, such as uh, the geometric uh, geographic background, age, sex, diet, medication, and GI symptoms. And very good quality data are, are needed, of course, because uh, of the increase of the degree of freedom. So, so uh, we have uh, developed uh, a, a partnership with a very important uh, database Perfect. Uh, uh, we, we, we work with uh, NS Park Networks, uh, which is able to, to, to get uh, valuable information about clinical and genetic uh, information about the patients. But each recruited uh, patient uh, will be asked to participate to two other important databases. First, the NutriNet Santé and uh, the French Gut uh, projects which are both leaders in the characterization of uh, the diet and the microbiota and they are able also to 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 provide information about controls uh, and again we will uh, apply the same strategy uh, by fusioning uh, the data with uh, uh, explainable IA so it's time for conclusions uh, first of all, and as you know, of course, uh, animal models are valuable tools for elucidating physiopathological mechanisms and also for establishing proof of principle for any potential dietary supplement therapies. But the situation is a little bit complex because most of the preclinical pre pre tools are often lag behind those available for human investigations. And as, uh, as addressed yesterday, the models are only uh, proxies of human uh, diseases. For concerning the human data, uh, large uh, logistic, I, uh, I would like to say, uh, efforts have to be made in order to minimize the impact of confounding variables uh, uh, and uh, this increased uh, degrees of freedom necessitates extensive databases that adhere to the FAIR principles in order to access to the raw data. So I would like to thank you for your attention. Here are all my all the reference uh, if you want to contact me for any collaboration or questions. Thank you. Long live. India and France friendship.